back to the channel and on this episode we're going to go over our new design for the 350Z regular Mantis kit. Currently we just showed you guys an update on our Ackerman adjustable adapter block. Um, this is going to be what's bolting on to the knuckle and it's going to give you a multiple position Ackerman adjustment range so that you can change your Ackerman from zero, positive or negative. This was the original control arm design that we've been running for several several years. This is what we're still selling. This has been working really well for us and it gives you really good adjustment, um, easily replaceable parts and really user friendly. Um, but this is going to be a retired design in the next couple months where we are going to update to this new design. So to show you a couple of the features, it is a one piece welded design. The tie rod is going to be passing underneath this control arm. This is an alloy steel control arm that features an on-car adjustable caster pivot point here. Some things to note are we added even more distance between the knuckle pickup and the shock mount. Um, this increased distance is going to give you even more clearance on your um, suspension so that the brake caliper doesn't hit the coilover. It, we did this change on the previous kits, but it's just something that I re-emphasize as some kits still have that problem. Um, to show you how the caster adjustment works, this is actually a block that um, bolts to the one-piece arm, so technically it's still kind of a two-piece, and it's got a slight amount of pivot in it. That pivot is going to give you the ability to adjust this caster on the car without having to remove anything. So, to show you how this is going to work, you can see, if I turn the arm for you, let's go this way. You're going to be able to change the caster really easily from this fixed position. And as you change it, this is going to pivot because whenever you lengthen a member of the arm, it changes the distance between your pickup points and you need to have that difference in distance able to be adjusted. So we've added that into the arm and then you've also got locking bolts here on the bottom where there's going to be three Allen head bolts that you tighten down which gets rid of the need for a jam nut on the adjuster. You only need to tighten the one jam nut which is just on the heim joint. Other than that, everything else installs as if it's factory. You have sway bar mounts on the side. The heim joints are all the same that we've been using. And you've got a bump stop built into the arm to help with limiting your angle. So with that, keep your eyes open for these new updates as we um, go through our products and continue to make them better. This is what we decided to do for the 350. So I'm going to go ahead and install this on my car. We're going to go test it at the track get some wheel well shots of it working, and show you guys what's coming up next for the 350Z chassis. The beauty of the FDF brace. It's three pieces, in case you didn't know. I can leave this corner installed but I can remove the middle and this side because I'm working over here. I don't need to drop that entire stupid steel brace. It's all in the details. Plus it's super light compared to it. It's half inch, 13 millimeter thick aluminum. Hello. Well, who decided to make that a 13 and not a 14? Donnie. Uno, uh. Numero de. Numero de. Apparently that wasn't tight. Couple rocks. Loving it. Yeah, tell them about the hoist. Tell them we got a hoist. We got a new hoist. With the spin. Feet. Oh my goodness, we were killing ourselves with the other way. It's just brutal with our low cars. We can just scoop up these low mobiles, raise the old feet up, 
it goes higher. I'm six foot five. I don't know if any of you guys knew that. So I still got to stand like this a little bit, but the other one was horrible. I had to insert clip of stands. You need like a ratchet? I still have PTSD. Careful! Ow. Did you pinch yourself? No, I'm fine. <laughs> I was almost concerned. Okay, so we just gotta crack that off and then hopefully that comes off. That's, that's probably the hardest one. I think I should have done it. Ooh, we're about to come right out of her. Need a big impact. Is this one gonna do it? This one gonna get in there? Ah, oh, the knuckles in the way, Jack. Oh. It's on you. It's on me, you're just a camera guy? Yep. All right, Jack. The beauty of this is I can just zap this off because it's kind of in the way right now. Dump that down there for later. Get my OEM bolt. Bring it up here. Oh. Come on, boy. Where's your new hammer, Got Jack? <laughs> I see it. That's on. Okay. Swing this unit out. Try and massage her in there. Oh, Jack, I need the nut right there. Thank you. All right, that's not gonna delete itself on me. Oh, heavy, heavy. caster back a little bit I mean I had this car aligned and the wheel was literally perfectly center between my body kit here so I've got two fingers touching the front bumper and I've got four on the back so go three and three and uh, that'll give me a general idea of how close I am and I bet you it's within like half a degree so big gap though I fit my hill my whole egg roll fits in there. Right, right, right. But because the tires are so much more slippery, we just looped it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let's go. Let's go. Call something, ref. 